Yeah, so I just started the recording. You're ready to go. Okay, well, hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to our Meet the Designers chat. Um, I hope you've been enjoying all the events in BOI so far. Um, this one's going to be really fun. Today, we have um, Dan and Morton, and um, the two of you guys, can go I ahead and in introduce yourselves and take it away. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm Dan, uh, and I'm uh, the creative lead here, uh, Lego Mindstorms. We're here in uh, Innovation House in Billund. Uh, it's very, very quiet. It's uh, six o'clock in the evening in Denmark, and uh, I think we're pretty much the only ones left in the building now. Yeah. So if the lights go off and then security guards uh, take us out, that's because uh, they've shut the building. Uh, no, we've, uh, yeah, we're sat here, and I'm sat here with Morton. Yeah, and I'm Morton, and I'm a designer in the, in the Mindstorms uh, team. So my task was basically to come up with, with the models along with Dan and another model designer, and Pretty then cool. also uh, creating all the activities and, and all the fun that uh, you have hopefully all played with. And you can see them behind us. Yes. Oh, uh... So uh, Sanjay, RJ, uh, uh, did you have any questions for us or? Uh, yes, um, everyone. So. This is your opportunity to ask these two amazing uh, guests to any questions that you have. So feel free to unmute any unmute, or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, just type in the chat and we will read it out loud for you. Okay, so I have a question for you. Um, so I see that you guys designed the, the Lego parts for the Mindstorm kits. Um, do you get any inspiration from, uh, from anywhere? And if so, where do you get it from? Well, that's, a, that's a really good question. I mean, in terms of designing the set, and, and Morton said, like, you know, designing the play and the fun. Um, so it, it's not just the, the elements, the bricks, uh, you know, it's, it's how they interact and how they go together, you know, and that's the real um, uh, skill and, and magic, you know, of, of people like Morton and, uh, and uh, other model builders. We have Lee and we have Jörn. Uh, working on the physical model building um, to how they combine them together. Um, and we're inspired by uh, lots of things. Uh, we're inspired by fan models about what we see. We're inspired by existing Lego builds. Uh, we sit just down the, the, the hall from the Technic team. So we're always seeing the crazy things that they're building. Um, Morton and I are particularly inspired by video games. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we um, play a lot of video games and, and uh, love robots and robots and video games are always really cool. So uh, you'll see a lot of that come through in the design aesthetic and the choices that we made uh, in designing the um, in designing the sets. Also the real world, you know, you, I'm sure everyone's seen videos of uh, robot dogs on the internet um, from different companies. Um, and that heavily inspired us to make GLO in the sets. Um, you know, when we had four motors in the set, we, we realized we could for the first time make a, a, a true, uh, you know, quadruped uh, walking robot. So, uh, so yeah, inspiration comes from many places. Um, also, I guess more than the Charlie, the inspiration for, for the detailing on Charlie. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually inspired by the jaw from, uh, from Clank, from Ratchet and Clank, the, the, the video game. And but, but this element is actually, you can see in the, the Land Rover behind me, right? This is a, an element that was designed specifically for the Land Rover to look like perfect for the Land Rover. And what Morton did is he took it and he turned it upside down and he said, this looks, now, this looks like a, a cool robot. And yeah. so the inspiration comes from, from many different places. Um, and we've got a, a mixed design team um, in terms of backgrounds of um, robotics, model building, video games, uh, UX, all sorts of, of disciplines. So uh, yeah, there's inspiration comes from many places. That's great. Thank you. So I have a question on like, um... The, the actual bricks themselves with the spike. Why did you decide to have six ports instead of the eight on the mindstorms? So the in, in designing the new hub, um, in obviously in collaboration with Lego Education for their spike prime set, um, the idea was to try and make it as simple as possible, uh, you know, to try and lower the barrier to entry so so more more kids and adults could enter the world of, of mindstorms. Uh, and one of the things was having uh, eight ports on EV3, but actually only four for input and only four for output. And actually it, it's, um, it was one of the things that was, uh, new users could, could find confusing that they couldn't just plug the cable in wherever they wanted, even though it would plug in. Um, so it was 
about having a, a port that could accept both motors and sensors uh, without uh, having a, um, uh, you know, any, any limitations. Um, so in that sense, you can have six motors running from the hub or you can have six sensors plugged into the hub. So it's, a, it's, it's an increase in that. The total number obviously is, is down and that's to try and uh, keep the size and the weight of the hub uh, down because we wanted to make a much smaller, much lighter um, hub so we can then build it into smaller and, and, and more agile um, uh, robots like, like GLO. You know, the, the weight of GLO with all the bricks and all the motors is only slightly heavier than the old EV3 brick with AA batteries in it. Yeah. So there's a lot for the, the size and the weight saving. Um, Plus it's, it's, it's much easier to build with both the, the, the shape of the hub and the fact that you can put your cable in wherever you want to put it in. That, that just makes it so much easier to, uh, to, to build with and, and design models with, because you don't need to design around a limitation. You just put your, your, your element where you want it and then you plug it in and it's, um, yeah. It's 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 so much easier. I would also yeah. mention that like the the gyro sensor is is all in, internal, so you don't have to connect an external gyroscope and use a support for that, and that makes it a lot nicer as well. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, good answer. Um, yeah, we have um, some questions in chat as well. Um, these two look. Um, we have two similar questions. So it's like, what did you go to college for to become a Lego designer? <laughs> well, uh, I actually went to a, a, a computer game design and, and media um, um, education. And uh, I, 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 I did go to college. I have, a, I, have a, I have a master's degree, but you don't need to have a master's degree. You don't need to go to, to college. And anyone can become a, a Lego designer. It's just a question of... Uh, of passion and uh, and um, and dedication. So my personal story <laughs> is that I was I was an A four before I became a Lego designer, and I hadn't built any milestones. I just built uh, big uh, Star Wars spaceships, you know, my own uh, my own designs. And um, then I applied for 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 a job here, and uh, and uh, I got the uh, I got accepted. And then you go onto this uh, this 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 workshop where you meet. Um, 20 or 25 uh, other potential Lego designers all over the world. And then it's a, a weekend where we're just giving given challenges. I don't know if you have seen, um, um, what's it called? Why did I forget that? Um, Brick Masters, what's it called? <coughs> Lego Masters. Lego Sorry. Masters, Lego Masters, yes. <laughs> yeah, Lego <laughs> Masters. And basically some, some of the challenges you're giving there is, is of course there's, that is much more a show form. But it's it's two uh, two days where it's a it's a miniature worst, uh, version of, of Brick Masters and maybe a little bit more focused on technique than than just pure pure show and spectacle. Um, so basically, it's a it's it's a competition against against other designers and then it's and it's also a lot of fun. You got get to meet a lot of great people, and then um, yeah, after a few weeks you you get uh, you get an answer if if you are in or or out. Um, but at, at this workshop, you find out that people come with a lot of different uh, uh, backgrounds. Some people are, are artists, and some people are, are just fans, and some people have long education. Some people have had their own company, and some people are just fresh out of the high school and uh, have uh, have have sent in an application, and it's in the workshop. So there's no no specific way, but you need to have a passion for it, and you need to be able to see the world through the lens of a. Of, of a kid, you need to really be in contact with your inner kid because you might have had all sorts of success throughout your career, but if you can't really connect with your inner kid, then, um, then you're, you're gonna be very challenged in, in creating experiences for kids. And just uh, another perspective on the, on the interview or the, the session that um, Mort was talking about that, the, the two days of, of lots of <clears throat> um, model builders and fan builders and designers coming to lego i was actually on the other side excuse me i'm <coughs> real tickly cough i'm sorry he's not sick i'm not sick it's just i had a bit of cake before we came in here sorry um yeah so i was actually in the hiring team looking at the candidates so looking at morton and other um uh, potential designers to join uh, and, and some of the the tests and the activities that we set um obviously around pushing them with their building skills, their artistic skills, but also how they responded to a brief. Um, because, you know, you don't get to this stage of being invited to come to Berlin for two days 
and in Hotel Legoland in a big conference room, unless you can build really well, unless you've already got some magic and some talent uh, in terms of Lego building and, and whether that's functions or whether that's aesthetics or whether that's just play. Um, but so you're in that in that room because you have skill already, because you have some, uh, you know, something that Lego sees in you. What we're actually looking for is how uh, individuals respond to briefs, how they respond to constraints, how they work together as a team um, or how they work as individuals. So it's actually a, it, it's one of the most awesome parts of the job is, is uh, you know, that sort of process. And it's. It's great and terrible in equal measures because you want everyone to come and work at Lego. You want it was many designers, many people through the door building great Lego products. Um, so, but ultimately we have to, you know, say yes to some people and no to others. And uh, I don't know what was what was. I mustn't have been feeling very well the day that we said yes to Morton. I can't think why we said yes, but uh, I, I mean, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's great, um, you know, a great process. And to go back to the question about education. Some people have uh, industrial de industrial design degrees and masters, and uh, we just had a colleague, uh, you know, move on who had a, a doctor, had a PhD, you know, incredibly highly educated people. But then also we have people who have just built and they love to build, and they're just they love Lego, they love to make toys, they love to make sculptures, they're artists, and and it, they don't have any formal design training. And, and they're able to, to do, you know, fantastic uh, models and fantastic creations. So I would say, do something that you love. Um, you know, if you want to, there's, there's no one degree or one course to take uh, when it comes to um, uh, when it when it comes to education. When you look at something like Mindstorms, we have a such a diverse team from uh, UX designers, UI designers. We have. Um, uh, you know, uh, en engineers for coding and uh, looking at hardware. We have people like Morton from a video game background who are looking at play and looking at, uh, you know, kids' motivations. We have marketing people. We have a whole mix uh, within within the team. So I would say do something that gives you energy and gives you joy and gives you passion and 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 keep, you know, your hands on the bricks and keep building. I see a lot of questions in the chat. I don't yeah. know, uh, Arvind or, or, or Sanjay, whether you want to choose some, whether we'll try and get to them. They, they keep popping up quest quicker than we can read them. Yeah, um, I can, um, I've, been, I've been keeping track so I can read okay, some of them great. out loud to you. Um, yep. So the first one is um, like, how many designers do you have in Billund? In Billund, I think the design organization now is I think uh, nearly 400, 380, I think, designers yeah. or, or in the design organization. I think mm. it's, is it that many? Is it 300? Something around. I think it's around three. It might be around 300. Sorry, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to count the number of teams and number of designers. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's three to 400. So quite a lot of designers in it, or a lot, wow. of, a lot of designers or design teams. Yes. How many do you have specifically working on, uh, on Mindstorms? Uh, we have uh, Lee <laughs> and Jörn and Morton, um, uh, model builders, uh, digital designers. We have uh, two, three, four. So there's a team of a design team or the whole team? Um, the whole team is probably the whole yes. team. I have to count the desks now. Yes, um, yes, a lot of them. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it 10 people, say? Yeah. Maybe there's 10 people. Yeah. Yeah, maybe but probably less, probably eight people, because people do dual roles. So we have some uh, designers who work on uh, Technic uh, half the time, and then on Mindstorms the other half, and we have people working, uh, you know, in, in other product lines as well. So while we're talking about the designers, uh, could you tell could you tell uh, our participants here a little bit about the design process that it took to come up with all the models for the Mindstorm set? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Um, so um, in the beginning, there's nothing but uh, the brief and the, com the brief comes down from the creative lead, uh, Dan. And, um, and so, so in the beginning, you, will, you, you read through the brief and, the brief, brief and then you, well, you talk a lot and you, you discuss and, and you, you get additional inspiration. But, but for example, the, the, the brief for, uh, for, for, for this guy, it was basically what we wanted to do something with, uh, with, with four motors and, and this thing could be could be a cool thing to do, and the reference was was basically these YouTube videos with with companies that 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 that, that builds four legged uh, four legged uh, robots, um, 
and then you you just play around with the idea and you have and and you have you have fun with it uh, you you're also thinking of a of an experience around it so it's not just about when you're doing a mind something not just buying having a model that looks fine on the shelf because well you need to be able to play with it so but but in the beginning you you you're just experimenting and having a, a lot of fun and it's 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 very uh, you know free range development in the beginning it's not like every day you need to now it needs to have another leg or now it needs to have a new sensor. It's about finding where's the fun, where, where's the experience. So you build a lot of sketch models. So I don't know if you've seen the designer video, but but then we went into depth with the, with this guy, but also for, for Charlie, which was Dan has there here. They go through many, many different versions, many different iterations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are thinking just mechanically, okay, sh how should it work? But sometimes it's going to be well, how can this be the most fun that will make a change? And sometimes as small chains have, have, have a big effect. Uh, I remember the, the late nights, Morton and I would be here and we were deciding on the length of the, the antenna for the, you know, uh, for, for the top of Charlie and which way should they be on the front of the box? And, you know, should we make it so people can change the angle? And so there's, there's everything from the, the, the tiny detail of, you know, something like that uh, to the mechanical functions of, of, of GLO, which, you know, we pivoted um, not late on in the process, but after we had many iterations on the different walking mechanisms, um, you know, based on some old NXT, uh, you know, mechanisms, which are really great uh, walking mechanisms. And then finally the new one we landed on for, for GLO. So as Morton said, there's a, there's a brief and then there's a process within the design team. There's also a lot of play testing. Uh, so we'll put it in front of a lot of kids and adults. Um, and we did that extensively with, with this latest version of Mindstorms, um, where we'll take what we think, you know, um, kids will like, um, and we ask, right? And we see, can they decode it? Can they understand what this model should do? And then once it does what it does, does that meet their expectations or do we need to go back and work harder? Uh, do we need to think of some different ways to make the play more fun? Um, so yeah, it, it's it's a it's not a short process. I mean, we've been working on this for uh, three years. I think that was one of the questions about how long it took to 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 develop it. It mm. was it was three years to to get it. Um, you know, and that obviously includes all the app development. Um, we're not touched on that. You know, so the digital experience is is a big part of this. Um, so that there is a a huge amount of work, and then obviously life after launch. You know, so the product launches, and we've been continuously updating the app, and that's why we still have you know a team working on this because. We have uh, the fan models and we have extra model, you know, um, uh, you know, models from the fans that are going in the app that we need to to build and test. And, um, you know, all, all the uh, all the extra features in the app that we also need to do. So, yeah, it's um, it's a continual process. Yeah. And one, 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 one thing with, with doing the, the model specifically is, is that we also need to ensure that that they are in, inspiring. Um, um, the, the, the kids and, and adults that play with them. So it's not just so you've done all the activities. But you need you you need to be uh, we, you need to have a model and a design that inspires. So we've done that through giving all the models a different personality. So Gilo has a personality and Charlie has a very different personality. Um, so there's kind of like a hint to what what would this robot do other than just a functional thing that well it can raise its arms. But this Charlie is a little bumbling robot, so that inspires you might inspire you to make your own code where it goes around and being bumbling or, or doing something else that we hadn't. Haven't um, haven't done for you, and so so what, one of the most important things is that that the models are, are inspiring, and then the the app and all the development, all the work that we have done, is just the beginning of of, of a journey. Awesome. Um, I'll read out the next question. I've seen this a few times. It's what inspired you to uh, design the Lego Mindstorm. I think what we did is is the we looked backwards to, to go forwards, right? So we we were you know coming up to the twentieth anniversary of of Mindstorms at the time when we were starting off development of this, and and we were trying to understand why Mindstorms were still relevant, why there was still such a strong and active community, why it was still around, why was it still you know uh, an important Lego um, you know uh, experience, uh, and how we could continue that legacy. Um, so we really looked back at what. Um, what had, had, had gone well. Uh, so we looked at all the reviews and all the, the surveys and any bit of data that we'd ever captured about any generation of Mindstorms. And we read every single comment. We had all of them translated, uh, you know, so from all over the world and, and we created this big overview of uh, what people like, um, you know, what they don't like and where the gaps are in the experience. 
And that then laid out for us, you know, what was the important thing to do with the new Mindstorms. Um, we're also, uh, and, um, you know, we're very um, insights and data driven. So looking at what, uh, you know, the passion points of kids and, and teenagers and adults and, and uh, adult fans, you know, what's interesting them, what's uh, motivating them, what do they, what would they want to see in a new Lego set? Um, and obviously, you know, we built the robot inventor because robots are still a really strong draw for us. Uh, you know, they're really popular uh, in that sense. And when you look at the rest of the Lego um, portfolio, the rest of the Lego products, you know, we have some fantastic vehicles. We have great action play and other lines. You know, um, Mindstorms really is the home of Lego robots. Um, and, and we really wanted to, to um, you know, create a, a really classic Mindstorms robotic set, um, which is, you know, what you see. It's the five in one. It's got... <laughs> humanoid robots it's got vehicles it's got animals it's got all those all those you know bits and pieces in there that that really make up uh you know uh, a classic mindstorm set so yeah so we we look backwards to look forwards and they're looking forwards is is the the move onto the the um the powered up lpf2 uh platform you know and having that um that foundation in something that is able to grow uh, and we're, we're slowly growing that in the experience as we speak you know so we've just updated for the motors and the sensors so you can plug a train into the hub or you can plug a we do sensor in or a, a boost sensor. Um, and we're looking to expand that into the full platform uh, as we go forward with future updates, um, because that for us gives us this huge opportunity to to make Mindstorms more than just about the core set. But Mindstorms is then about, you know, that sort of playful learning with coding and, and, and uh, you know, technique building um, and, and functions across, you know, across all of Lego. So it was, uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of inspiration from what people have done before us because there's been some fantastic mindstorms in the past. Awesome. Uh, we have one actually more interesting question in the chat. We've been talking a lot about the actual physical design of the models, but could you tell us a little? But someone is asking, how do you how did you develop like the color scheme? What was the thought process behind uh, coming up with the colors for the set? So we, we're smiling because colors is a is a, a, a very hot topic, um, you know, whenever we're developing a product, because when you have something as complex as Mindstorms, which involves, you know, technical builds and involves coding, uh, you know, um, and involves, you know, interaction between the digital and the physical, that can sometimes be a little challenging for everybody to, to grasp and to understand. But everybody has an opinion on colors. <laughs> so everyone will tell you when you're making, when you're designing something, when you're prototyping, when you've got a sketch model, if they like it or they don't like it. Um, but for us, we, we wanted to choose something that um, very much differentiated Mindstorms from the other Technic products. And, and in the past, when Mindstorms, you know, was um, uh, EV3 and uh, it was... Um, uh, not designed well, it was it was uh, designed uh, of a time where it was very targeted at boys um, and we wanted to be for more kids uh, just all kids uh, so we weren't targeted at a certain percentage of boys and girls or a certain split we were just like we want this to be for kids so for kids who love robots the kids who love coding and mindstorms this will be the the, the coolest set and, and the best set for them so we set about trying to find a color scheme that would make it a bit more uh, inclusive and a bit more uh, neutral in, in our in the tone um, rather than being, um, you know, sort of overly aggressive or overly, you know, uh, we didn't want to have robots with, um, you know, great big spiky mohawks and, you know, um, really sort of angry on the box. We wanted to be a little bit more, um, you know, open and, and inviting. And that led us very quickly to, uh, and, and also looking at the Technic portfolio, um, th there are so many awesome Technic models now, right? Uh, they, they have so many fantastic vehicles that, they are using all of the colors pretty much. <laughs> so if we wanted something that really stood out uh, and could last as a Mindstorms, uh, you know, visual identity, we had to choose something that was, um, you know, that was was not uh, not currently present a great deal in the portfolio. And that led us to the, the 107 teal Lego color. Um, we also did a huge amount of testing. We took um, five very different uh, color palettes to a big play test, um, you know, with, with over 100 kids and their parents. Uh, and put them through a, a you know a huge amount of testing um, because we wanted to make sure this was a color that and a color combination and a color scheme and and Morton can talk a little bit to, more to how he designed the models with the colors in, in mind, um, but to make it something that was uh, up in age you know we didn't want to talk down we didn't want to make it look like a um, you know a, a product that was for younger kids it needed it's a ten plus product we want it to be aspirational for older kids as well um, so so yeah it was there was a lot of work in that um, and, and we 
we've settled on what we've got and, and some of the principles that Morton had in, in, in terms of designing the models. Yeah. So, so what, what we came up with, and it was actually pretty early on, was that we wanted all, all the functional parts, um, so the legs, all the parts that move to be, to be black, and then the, uh, and all the, the, um, the shell pieces to be white. That's like the core of the design uh, functionality and we're inspired by both the robots from, from the portal game, um, but also the robots uh, from Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, so Ben and I, we're very uh, computer game inspired. So that, that, that directly led to, to how Dilo, he's like a cross between one of those robot bug, uh, dogs you see on the internet and something you could see in, 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 in Horizon. And then we wanted the, the 107, the, the teal, to be, to be, uh, to be um, um, a splash color. But finding the right balance between, uh, between all these, these colors was also a challenge. So what we did, well, what I did, <laughs> is that I, I went down and, uh, to our painting room and just painted, um, I don't know how many hundreds uh, of, of motors and the, and the technical elements uh, in, in, in teal and in, and in gray, 194, is that color code? Um, and, and, and so, so we could mix and match and see what makes sense because one thing is that we want one model to look good with the right proportion of, uh, of teal, uh, black and white, but it should look, be proportionate with all the models. So we, did, don't have, so we don't have models that are almost using no teal and other models that are all teal. Um, so that was also a challenge. So that was a big a bit back and forth, but also uh, meant that we had to paint a, a lot of elements. But um, in the end, it, it worked out, and I'm, uh, I'm very satisfied with the result. Uh, yeah, also, also the hub, we also changed the, that, uh, experimented with many colors for, mm -hmm. for that one. Um, but yeah, but that was a process. Simply, you, you can't decide before you see it in flesh. We can also design the models uh, digitally, but you need, you need to have it physically to, mm -hmm. to, to see how would this look in, in, in your room with like proper lighting, no, not perfect lighting. Um, so that's that's a lot of legwork. It's also a lot of fun. Sometimes a bit frustrating, but but also a lot of fun. Awesome. Another question in chat that I've seen a few times is how you um, came up with that five by five grid for the display um, compared to like the LCD screen that that the past Mindstorm sets have had. So the the five by five grid is actually in system. So it's actually Lego uh, modules, um, you know, so if you build over, uh, you know, over the display, those, um, you know, those, uh, you know, and, and therefore the dimensions of the hub then dictated, you know, where we would have the LEDs in that, in that display. So five by five is, is not a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a common resolution for creating bitmaps or icons. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's an interesting one, um, but we've been pretty creative with it and used it in, in ways that have brought a lot of fun and, and um, you know, energy to, to the, to the characters. Um, you know, the, the old uh, screen the, on the EV3 was used to convey a lot more information, um, you know, and uh, running, um, you know, a lot more stuff uh, directly from the hub. Um, but through, um, you know, testing, um, particularly with new users, uh, we found that um, having a mobile device, um, you know, or having a, a laptop, uh, you know, in streaming mode, um, uh, you know, enabled a lot of that functionality. And I know there's, there's a... Um, there are some differences to how it's used in in competition settings and uh, you know um, other other uh, instances like that. Um, but it was also about again trying to create this smaller um, you know simpler hub, which uh, you know is easier to use rather than having a um, you know a, a, a full on operating system with a file structure to navigate. We wanted a, a very quick to load, quick to start, quick to the fun, uh, and that was one of the guiding principles actually for the whole whole experience was. Uh, getting to the fun fast. Uh, you know, we wanted uh, the activities to 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 put a smile on your face and and to, to make you happy. And that's why the building steps uh, for both Blast and Charlie, <laughs> we we had uh, we had some challenges, shall we say, because a, a classic Lego model uh, is always built from the bottom up, right? You stack you stack bricks, right? If you're making a big Technic car, or you're making a castle, or you're making a, a friend's boat, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. Um, it's just a bit easier because of gravity. Um, what Morton decided he wanted to do was start with the head of the robot and work down. Um, and uh, it's not just because Morton was being awkward or, or uh, you know, designery. Um, it was because when we did testing, uh, the interaction with the hub to actually animate it with faces and with sounds or with your name or whatever, we found kids were just in engrossed in that process. They really loved, we had to sort of say, come on, we need to move on with the test now. We have other things to do, right? But they were like, no, 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 we want to play. And we're like, well, 
instead of stopping people from playing, we should encourage that. And we should say, hey, the first activity is, oh, some of the lights have just gone off. Um, we're gonna have to wave around in a minute to turn the lights back on. Um, yeah, so the first activity is put uh, a face on Charlie and get some sound, you know, make, him, make, make, make Charlie make a sound. Mm. Um, you know, and that was a, um, a, a conscious choice, uh, you know, to then have to, uh, you know, convince the building instructions people that no, we weren't crazy. We were starting with the head of the robot first and then the body would come and we would work it out in, yeah. in, as we went forward. If I may. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I know there's uh, some people in the chat that are wondering how you build the, the Land Rover behind you because we're <laughs> looking at it and taking screenshots right now and trying to figure out if you started with the Technic model or, or something. So can you talk about it, please? I would love to talk about this because this is not a Land Rover. This is a Dan Rover. So this is this is mine. So I, I went... Uh, <laughs> I went to the employee store um, the day the Land Rover was released and I bought myself a copy and then I took it home and that evening I built it. So I built it, followed the instructions, built it all in the green with all the bits and pieces. And um, yeah, I can't really see it. Really well. um, and then the next day I started ripping it apart because I'm like, I, this is going to be super easy because I've got the, I've got the, the wheel arches already. I looked at it. I thought I can probably fit one motor on each hub, right? And, you know, I'll work out the steering and it'll be fine. It wasn't that. It's a complete, it's a complete new chassis. So underneath, um, it's, it's got one motor per wheel for driving and then another motor for steering. The hub is obviously where the hub should be in the engine. So that's uh, powering all the, uh, all the drive and the steering. There's another hub in the back here, which powers the six color sensors. That might be a little over, maybe I can turn that one on. That might be a little overkill, six color sensors, but um, you know, why not? They're just for uh, the lights. <laughs> here we go. They're just for lights, right? Because they look so cool. Um, there's even a spare hub on the roof, like there's a spare wheel on the back, right? Because if you're going off road, <laughs> you know, your battery might run out or, or things are going to happen. And even you can look inside and there's a little mini blast and Charlie along for the ride. That's great. Um, but yeah, it, it's actually uh, two modules wider. The wheel, the, the wheel track is, is two modules wider than the actual official model. Um, the, the frame is pretty much so that the, the hood and the, uh, the doors uh, and the roof are the same, um, you know, because the Technic guys really know how to build. Um, but, uh, but the rest is a, is a custom Dan chassis. Oh, I had to upgrade the suspension as well. I don't know if you can see, uh, it's too dark probably. There are three suspension uh per axle or per wheel should i say so there's 12 in total uh, i think there's four in the official set because it was uh it's it's a it's a beefy it's a beefy model it's pretty heavy yeah, and does it drive around a little bit it does but i just checked my phone before and i don't have the code on it I, but i think i've got it on my desktop so if i can just airdrop it to myself i can i can probably um yeah damn rover there it is right let's uh let me let me see if I can airdrop it. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Let me try and uh, let me try and do this. Awesome, the Dan Rover is so cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I have to agree that it's very cool. Airdrop. Now I'm wondering if I'm going to buy the Land Rover or just go over the instruction and use my stuff to to do a Mark Rover instead of a Dan Rover or something. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, which one's up? Right, let's, uh, let's see if it works. See if we've got power. You, you got to spare power if you need to. No pressure, then. No pressure. Bluetooth connection here yeah, being recorded. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Nothing takes as long as a live. Well, tech well, when Dan, while Dan is fixing Dan Rover, uh, Morton, what has, uh, one of the kids has a question in the chat. What's your favorite model out of the five main models? Oh, yeah. oh which is your favorite child? I mean, wow, that's uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. whoa, that's a tough question. Right? Well, it really depends on on. on oh, it's okay. Dan what, Rover's fixed. Oh, oh thank you. I can answer that. You need to be a cameraman. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can be. I, I'll be cameraman. Oh yeah, that's oh, cool. 
That's, that's with the cool. uh, that's with the remote. So I built it's a super super quick uh, piece of code and uh, remote control. But this desk is a little. So all you students, maybe we will see very cool rovers named after yourselves in a few months, inspired by Dan Rover. There we go. Yeah, if I see lots of other some Mark Rovers and Diego Rovers, and uh, yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah. But regarding the question, which, which is the favorite, I want to say that it's, it, I think it's always a model I have, I've, I've, um, I've built last. So if I've just built, uh, built Triggy, then Triggy is my favorite because then I'm remembering all the fun things you can, you, can, you can do with Triggy. And if it's Charlie, I remember all the fun things you can do with, with Charlie and I'm doing with Charlie. So I have a really hard, I don't think I could ever answer oh. that, that, that question. I know when uh, I was, uh, was was building uh, Gilo, it was my favorite, and when Yacht came, it became even more my, my favorite. But then yeah. I worked in one of the other models afterwards, and so it's always the latest. I think it's the same with kids. It's always your latest kiss that's the favorite, right? <laughs> oh! <laughs> but I, I, I think it's it's. it's I, have, <laughs> I have good memories of, of fond memories of, of each of the models for different reasons, and, and just as Mortal was saying now, I was remembering in the office here, you know, the late nights we were here getting the tempo right for Charlie's drumming, right? And it's, there were three grown men all there watching a robot going, yeah, we need to change it slightly, right? And when we sit and change the code and then we do it again and we, you know, and we would be here till God knows what time and I'd go and get us pizzas and, and we would keep working, you know, but then the same thing for Tricky, right? I mean, doing, uh, you know, the Tricky basketball or, you know, again, refining the code, or, you know, oh, should it drive this far or that far? What if we do this? and like just all these different experiences and, you know, uh, all the, the, the challenges that we had to overcome. Um, so I think for me, there's a, you know, uh, there's a special place for all of them uh, yeah. in my heart. Um, I'm trying to think which ones I have built at the moment. I have a, a Blast and a Charlie and then a half built. My, one of my youngest, my youngest kid, daughter wants to build Gilo. Um, so that's, that's on, the, on the list to do. So maybe I need to take about one and yeah. build Gilo soon. But it's but it's actually one one, one of the uh, well it's actually a um, conscious effort when designing the set that we didn't want to be like an A model and then the the backing vocals in yeah in the back or the orchestra we didn't want to have an El Elvis and then the two others we wanted to have uh, five models which uh, that might be favorites for a different target audience but we want something that were were all all passion points and because we made them I guess they all hit all our own passion points or parts of our own personality. But right. uh, but that's but we wanted a full rich experience for all models, and you can also see that in the activities. There's a lot of activities for 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 all the models. It's not like there's one model that has twenty activities, and then the rest can share the rest. And and for the kids just getting the set new, um, the app has a whole collection of community fan designs being added, which means that now you may not just have five favorites; you might have ten favorites, right? Yeah. So it just Thank keeps you. getting better. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, just uh, it's just screen sharing at its finest, right? But you can see here, there's there's the Explorer, there's the Sea Turtle, you know. Hey, look, there's the Melody Maker by a uh, couple of names I recognize there, right? And they 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 have flipped the mirror, so I can't be. <laughs> you'll never know who made that. Right, and uh, so one of the kids has a follow up. How long does it take you to design and build these um, design each model approximately? Oh. Well, that's Long, uh, longer than you think. Um, I think sometimes the ideas can come together pretty quickly, um, but then it's all the refinement and, um, you know, all the processes we have to go through around uh, Lego quality, uh, yeah. you know, making sure that they, uh, you know, uh, stand up to play. So, so Charlie, for example, you know, you think, well, it's just four motors and, and it's the hub, right? But then the design of the arm, so you can actually hold Charlie by the arm or by the head, right? Without it falling apart. Uh, that takes, uh, you know, a lot of loops and iterations and and, and testing. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, put it's, a time on it. It's, it's it's a tough question because sometimes you also pivot along the way. Yeah. So for example, Triggy, mm -hmm. uh, he was he was something completely else and had a different driving mechanism. And then there was I mean, couldn't get him exactly precise the way you want him. And then we found out that we wanted to do a sports bot. As, uh, as we also talked about in, in, the, in the designer video. So suddenly uh, Tricky just uh, completely became something else and we came up with a lot of new activities, but we wouldn't have been able to do that if we hadn't did, done all the work 
before then. So you could say with Tricky, the way he looks like now from when we begin to build him, that's then then that's a couple of months. Uh, but if you take in the year before that, yes. then then it's it's eighteen months. And then of course there's a lot of the model is 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 outside the model. It's uh, it's 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 the activities. So they they come up on top. So we try to finish the models and have some prototype activities when when the models are locked. But then afterwards we 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 add to to it and it takes six months, eight months, ten months, maybe a year for mm -hmm. some of the activities. Um, yeah, so it's really hard to 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 pinpoint because there's there's so also, also so many internal processes, but um, yeah, anywhere from from three months to a year plus. <laughs> I know it's not a very precise answer, but it's not the it's not a precise science. There's a question in the chat about the wheel design. Is this new wheel compared to the old mindstorms? So uh, they'd like to know sort of what the thinking was behind this this particular wheel if you guys so, know so yeah um I, I wasn't actually involved in in the development of the wheel um but uh you know i i can share um some of the the information and stories i've i've heard around it um and it was to to make it more than a wheel uh to make it into a a, a building element as well so that's why um you know you if you use it as a as a base you know so it can be sort of built this way and it's it's a very useful element in in that sense and we use that in quite a lot of the extra uh, models and activities um it's also uh molded rubber on on onto plastic so it's not like a you know um uh, you know you have to construct yourself so it, it it's uh, you know not going to have as much um you know play or, or slip in it um, and then also the, the the geometry is designed for more precise uh, turning, um, you know. So having a, a smaller contact point um, with the um, uh, with the table uh, or, or the surface that you're on, um, I think the ambition there was to to make it um, more precise for uh, controlling, um, you know, um, uh, movement uh, with with driving bases. Um, I have to say, I I really like it as as a as, as an element uh, as a you know. Um, as a Lego element, rather than just a wheel, is something that we can actually be creative with. Uh, I think it's really nice. Yeah, an example of that is um, the 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 VOI trophies um, that the teams that win awards will be getting actually uses um, the wheel as the base of the trophy. So yes, and I think fact. that that black and white wheel is that from a uh, is that from Ninjago used that in a know. in a vehicle? I think, but yeah. it's but it's a very beautiful trophy. <laughs> Yes, it is. So I get to meet the designer on Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> oh, yep, exactly. <laughs> well, that's a really cool use of the tire. Yep. So is there okay. any more questions? There's a lot of questions in the chat. Yeah. There's a lot. yeah if you have oh. questions, uh, just put them in the chat and we'll uh, get to I'll I guess of course, so, a lot of people want to know about people. Spike Prime versus 51515 because they're very similar. So how are they similar? How are they not? Um, there's all lots of variations of that. Okay. Yeah. So um, obviously we uh, we share the same technology platform. So in terms of hardware and, and the underlying software um, in terms of uh, Scratch and, and MicroPython. Um, they're different because obviously education is designed for in-classroom teaching and learning. Um, and Mindstorms is designed for at home fun and, and robotics play. So that's the big difference. Um, when you look at the Mindstorm set as well, um, it's a robot invention set, right? When you build Blast or Charlie or any of the models, you're left over with a huge pile of bricks, like a, a crazy number. And I remember, you know, again, back to the process, Morton and I would be here very late at night scratching our head going, do we put this one or do we put this one? And, and how do we balance this to make the best set that will be something that kids can and, and adults can can actually use to make something else and that's where we're seeing the really cool fan models because we we try to put as much extra stuff in the set as we could to mean there's more open creativity in a classroom that's not ideal in a classroom you need more structure um you need more um continuity uh, and you need you know those simple builds that they can be done in five to 15 minute uh, builds and then the lesson can be done with the teaching and the learning. For us, we want the value of, you know, all the Lego as much as we can get in the box, um, but also of activities and builds that build over time. So you 
feel that you're, you know, that you are actually getting uh, a great experience, that it's not just a small model and then you're done. It's actually, I'm invested in this and I'm going to build the model over time and I'm going to have something which I can then add to and build other attachments. Yeah. Um, a big difference on the software side as well. There's uh, a lot more features in the Mindstorms app um, based around the play. I mean, I showed it before the remote control builder, uh, the experimental extensions with the PlayStation and Xbox controllers, um, the animation editor. I mean, it's super cool to be able to, to animate the, the hub and, and put some, um, you know, the, the faces on Charlie or the animations on MVP. So, so yeah, there, there are obviously similarities, but two very different products for two very different audiences. Yeah. I think, I think the main reason for people just looking at the shelf is, is, is the models. It's, it's some very, very different models. They might share the same bricks, but that's the same with, with most Lego sets that you can say, well, let's share the same bricks as the other one, but the models yes. and the experience are, are, are very different. And in fact, in well, one of the first things I did when I started designing the set was, was to play around with the, with, with the spike set. It was now then to see what, 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 which direction they were going, also to get inspired, because of course we are inspiring, uh, getting inspired by each other. But also to, to figure out how how do, do our experience differ differ from from, from the spike uh, spike prime set, so I think if, if you're played with both, uh, I don't think uh, well then then it should be pretty clear what mm -hmm. what what that is that's it is it is a different um, experience besides sharing the same uh, technology platform. And one thing I do want to point out is that Mindstorm's robot inventor is absolutely allowed in First Lego League. Yes. There was an update um, that made that very clear. So I fully expect that next season um, it will continue to be allowed. And so mm -hmm. any of your teams that get a Mindstorm set, uh, don't be afraid to use it um, because it is allowed. <laughs> um, yeah, we look forward to seeing some teal robots uh, yes. soon. And as, I, I personally like the color combination, so yeah. it would be pretty to see. Yeah. There's a related question. Yes, well, there's a related question. Why no touch pressure sensor in uh, in Robot Inventor? Do you want to say that one? Or? Yeah, well, so so one, uh, what, yeah, the, and, and it, 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 it was a discussion we had here internally, but um, but we basically what, what we did was we traded the, the, the touch sensor for the um, for the um, for, for an extra motor. Because we could see in, in, in our in our in our data that that was something that that a lot of people they were they were requesting like why don't we have a, a fourth motor so we can do some really cool models and quadrupeds, so that was a conscious decision. It was also a matter of the touch sensor functionality. It was often used used as as a button, and we found out there's other ways we can do that just by tapping tapping the hub. Now we have the the gyroscope built into the hub. Um, so there was a way to achieve something something similar with the tech that was already there. So uh, basically, it was a decision that we could add so much more value and so much many more builds um, if if we have had had an extra motor. So uh, as you can see, all all of our models uh, use use uh, four motors uh, extensively, and this experience wouldn't have been uh, been mm -hmm. been possible. Um, so yeah, so it's also a way to set us apart and do you know, the next level of robotics compared to EV3, NXT, and RCX when 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 before. So that this is like the next next level of of robotics, um, and the touch sensor is of course always there. So if if you really want it, you really need to build with it. It's 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 available to uh, to get. I think it's available to get now on shop at home. Yeah. Just need to check that. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. If it's not there, it, it will be coming to shop yeah. Yeah. Oh, so thanks. That was one of my questions. Can we expect a, an extension pack with touch sensor and big wheels and more part like the, the Spike Prime have? Because the, the Spike Prime expansion set is like awesomeness in a box. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, the extent, yeah, I, I agree. I think the expansion set for, for Spike Prime make, enables you to make some really cool models, um, you know, and, and there's some nice elements in there. And, um, you know, uh, we know the team and work with the team that developed that. Um, and, and they had a really clear brief as to what they were making that for. Um, we obviously uh, can't talk about anything that we may or may not be doing uh, on, in terms of product development. Uh, you know, we can't talk about future plans. Um, in terms of uh, four sensors and things being on lego.com that's something that uh, i think if they're not there they they should be coming as as individual components um i would say we we won't be making an expansion pack like uh, lego education you know because that is purely targeting uh, or is really targeting competitions and you know um first lego league you know very much with that course that's 
not something that we'll be doing. Um, but we are always listening to, to, to input and feedback, uh, you know, around what could make Mindstorms, you know, better, what could make Mindstorms, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, more relevant and, and interesting in the future. Um, and if there is, you know, need and demand, then then <laughs> we'd love to work on something like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's no plans for a, a spike uh, style expansion set. Thank you. And I guess related questions are about why do you have two ports less on the on the new I hub? Think, yeah, I yeah, think we, we discussed we, that one. Oh, did that yeah, one? we did. We did that one earlier. And gyro yeah. inside built in. That's probably you addressed that one also. Yeah, I mean uh, the gyro being in the hub is is also due to changes in technology, right? Changes in chipsets, changes in what you can actually you know um, what you can actually build and what you can actually make. And and we have we all have you know a, a mobile phones have a ridiculous number of sensors built onto one chip uh, so therefore you can access all these features and 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 that's why we have the gyro in the hub on the on the actual um you know um in there as an option it, it made more sense to do that and include it when we were building the hub than to build a another external element that then takes support away um you know uh, and uh, try and package as much as we can into the hub I think that last question there is about how do you become a Lego builder? Like, what do you need to study? Maybe best masters? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, think, I think we covered yeah. that all. Uh, all yeah, this. I think it's yeah. that education. <laughs> right. Okay. Masters yeah, we did talk theory. about that. Yeah. I mean, right. basically, you don't need a master's, right? You you know, you you can be a, a Lego builder, a Mindstorms builder, a, a fan. Um, you know, I would say, what does it, you know, we have people with industrial design degrees. We have people with uh, fine art degrees. We have people with no degrees. We have people who have been here building Lego for 30 years, who have never been on a how to build Lego training course in their life, um, you know, and, uh, and everything in between. So I'd say do something that uh, brings you joy, do something that, uh, you know, gives you energy, uh, and keep building, uh, you know, Mindstorms. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in Billund soon, right? <laughs> yep. Um, so there was a question from a bit earlier, uh, when you were talking about some of the play tests that you did for deciding colors. Uh, and this question is, how can I join future play tests? <laughs> wow. Uh, the short answer is I don't know. <laughs> no, we, we, we have um, various uh, different departments that help us arrange play tests and also making sure that we don't see the same uh, kids and, and adults, uh, you know, over and over again. Um, obviously, uh, we, I, I live in, in Billund here and, and Morton lives uh, just a, a town just over. There's a lot of high affinity Lego kids in this area, a lot of kids who play with a lot of Lego and see a lot of Lego. So if I was to go and ask them about this, I don't think I'd get a very representative answer for what kids all over the world think. So we, we do testing in many different countries. Uh, obviously, it's been really tricky uh, over the last year. We've had to do testing over Zoom, uh, which is, uh, let's say it's different, right? Um, than being there, um, you know, because actually seeing kids and, and adults hands-on playing with the Lego and breaking the models and not understand that's where the, that's where the the real learning comes from us um there isn't like a sign up to be a lego tester i'm sorry um it it it, it probably is it is as fun as it sounds <laughs> yeah. uh sanjay um uh, was there any questions that were in the chat that we missed i saw a lot come in so i'm not sure if there are any we haven't answered yet yeah, I think a lot of them, uh, several of them are repeats. So I think that, I think we've covered all the ones in the chat. Have you done the shape of the motor? And why, I, I didn't why see that one. Have, why does Mindstorms have a different oh, shape yeah. compared uh, yeah. to the old Mindstorms motors? Okay, so this is, yes. Yeah, so, I, and I briefly touched on this earlier with the, the platform and, and it, it was about unifying the, the um, Lego tech experiences. So obviously we've had um, uh, Lego Boost in, in the market for, for a, a few years now. And, and um, that's been loved by kids all over the world. And we have the Star Wars Boost as well. We have the Lego City trains, um, you know, the Batmobile, all based on the same um, LPF2, no, sorry, Lego powered up. Um, platform. I always, uh, I always get that wrong. Um, and uh, the decision to bring Mindstorms onto that same platform, I think, is a fantastic choice because Mindstorms is now long, no, is no longer an island. Uh, I think you had to go back to RCX days where you found that Lego Mindstorms was on similar plugs or the same plugs as other Lego tech products. Um, now we're all on the same platform, and now we're working really hard 
to make that platform work together uh, as seamless, seamlessly as we can. Um, as I said, we've, we've just released or recently released the update to the app. That means you can use motors and sensors. So anything, any motor or sensor that plugs in will work. And you'll also be able to have uh, extra blocks, scratch blocks for that, and all the reporting and the sensor output and, and the values works. Uh, you know, um, I think most of the motors and sensors work from day one, but they just didn't report uh, accurately in the app. So we've fixed all of that now. Um, and then we are working on other things. And like I say, I, I can't talk about what we are or aren't working on, but I can probably tell you some of the things um, because you're all friends and you won't, you know. Uh, um, we are working on a hub-to-hub -hub communication. Um, so a, a, a way for Mindstorm, uh, multiple Mindstorms hubs to communicate with each other over, over Bluetooth. Um, that's something we're actively working on and, and hoping to get out in a, in a future update. Um, and then once we've got that sorted and obviously tested and through QA and, and, and out to, to everyone, um, we'll then look at, you know, whatever comes next in terms of opening up the, um, you know, the, the platform and, and making, you know, Mindstorms a real home for, for that creativity with, with Lego. Awesome. I think there was a question that we had missed from earlier, uh, which is, is your job as fun as we imagine or are there days where it just feels like work? Um, it, that's, that's, uh, if, anyone, if, our boss, if our bosses aren't listening then uh, yeah it's super fun um, it, you know we, we uh, I am very aware um, uh, that I have my dream job um, it, it is just fantastic to, to come to Lego to, to work with people like Morton uh, not Morton himself people like him I don't really you know <laughs> sorry dad jokes um but yeah, it, it is great fun. There is obviously a lot of work, right? So when you say, is it also a lot of work? Yeah, I, I look at spreadsheets that I don't want to have to look at. I make presentations that sometimes I don't want to have to make because, you know, hey, you have to do those things. Uh, but uh, we also get to do cool stuff like this, which is talking about our adventures. And, um, you know, we get to build, I mean, the Land Rover, the Dan Rover I built, you know, in my spare time, but we get to, to build all sorts of other stuff, you know, and, and honestly, uh, the camera is facing this way because it's a wall with some bricks and everything, but that way, just like, what, five meters that way? All the secrets of Lego behind the glass wall. It's very cool. And not, Morton's nodding, so I hope, yeah. I hope Morton agrees. It, this looks like Santa's workshop if it was all Lego and super cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of that lame sawdust and wood. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, plastic and technology and, and very cool. Yeah, imagine you have every possible lego brick at your disposal in every possible color and they're organized and when you've used them all you can go and get some more yeah and that's motors and sensors and hubs it's, and yeah. whatever technology and when you get stuck with the programming you can just ask someone to come and help you <laughs> yeah because that happens there is one uh just a question of, in the chat about if there is a remote control for the 51515. I did want to point out that Dan had shown earlier that uh, with the Dan, uh, Dan, what was, what did the you Dan call Rover. it? Yeah. Dan Rover. Dan he has shown a remote control. It's actually, you can have it on your phone now, which is really cool. Yeah. So you can, yeah, you can, you can edit it. You can make your own, uh, own remote control. Yeah, yeah. So you can really, you know, you can add like joystick and, and add buttons and change uh, the colors. And yeah, so it's, it's super simple to, to make. I made the little, you know, sliders to drive the down river because that's, you know, really easy to make. Um, but you can also use, uh, if you, if you pair uh, a PlayStation or an Xbox, uh, uh, is a PS4 and Xbox one um, remote yeah. with your uh, controller, with your laptop or your phone or your tablet. You can then, in streaming mode, um, use the the PlayStation remote through the device, then to the hub, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's a that's that's a fun experience. Yeah, and, and a quick little thing you can do is just add buttons and then make your own soundboard. Yes. And having having the hub, uh, hub make all kinds of uh, buttons, but yep. in then who was the example, you could also make like a blinking signal that you could toggle on and off if that's what you want, and the sensor could blink. Um, so yeah, that's so many opportunities, and some sometimes when you're playing around with it, we're just filling up. The little, uh, the little canvas full of widgets, so you can control all sorts of things with with your models and have all crazy functions. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we also use uh, the key press block in uh, in Scratch to make a keyboard with your laptop keyboard as well. Um, we often use that for prototyping if we want to fake stuff, because then we have, you know, uh, the, the access to the whole keyboard to be able to trigger uh, lots of different events. Yeah. And there are lots and lots of fun new blocks added with that last update, so that they can, if they own. A boost or something else they can plug it in now 
Yes, the, the, the we do well. boost uh, city. Uh, mm -hmm. We built a we, we built a train which was super cool. So taking one of the city train motors and plugging it, the Mindstorm sub into that, and then plugging a I think it was a, a boost color sensor in as well, and made a little train that runs around a track and makes noises when it covers goes across colors. So Mindstorms became a lot more versatile with this new update. Lots you can do and imagine um, with the parts you have. Mm -hmm. Are there any there other wire extensions, please? I guess that's a request. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll take a work on we'll that. Take a list of all requests and we'll write them down. Uh, yes. Oh, I like this one. Who sorts your Lego elements that you don't use? <laughs> um, actually, yes, it's the it's. I think it's it's um, magic happens overnight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they have little elves that come in and. There's the robots do it. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have actually built robots to come and clean our yeah. dots. Right. Uh, Arvin, do you see any questions in the chat? So I see some people are asking questions about Spike Prime, but Dan and Morton work for the Mindstorm side of things, so the, the new um, 51515 set, uh, not the Spike Prime set. They can probably tell you how it's different from an EV3, though, if, if that would interest the kids. Um, who were thinking about whether they should upgrade um, from EV3 to 51515. Uh, well, I can say that you should because it's, it's basically in the word, right? Upgrade, you go from one thing to, to the next. I'm a big fan of, 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 of EV3, but it was something that we looked at when, when, um, when we designed this set, how, how can we make this, as I talked about earlier, how can we make this be the next level? How can we make this even more fun and even more versatile? And and more welcoming and more uh, inspiring to to uh, to play with. Um, so we've tried to do all all these things, and I think if if you if you play with the set, you uh, will discover that uh, yeah. it's it is a lot of fun. And I think for me, we, we haven't really talked about it much, but the the form factor, the design, and we, we we touched on it at the beginning about the weight of the hub, but the new motors in terms of their you know very simple build interfaces, so everything can slot together really quickly. So for new builders. The, the barrier to entry of having to create a complex driving base, which with EV3 took around 25 minutes, maybe up to 40 minutes for, for you know, experienced builders to make a simple driving base. It's literally a, a, a case of taking the pins and putting them in the motor and attaching the motor straight to the hub, putting the cables in, putting a couple of wheels on and a, on the ball wheel at the front and, and you're done, right? It, it's, it's really that low barrier to entry, but then also and I've talked to a, a couple of times now, having this platform that we are, you know, building into, um, that means it's not just limited to the one box that you see behind, you know, it, it's other Technic boxes, it's other, you know, um, city boxes, uh, it's other things that you have already from an old boost set that can be reused and repurposed. Um, and, and the differences in terms of the, the faster boot up time, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Scratch and the Python environment. And I know there are, there are many, many different ways to program EV3 because it's obviously, it's been in market for a, for a lot, lot longer. So the community and, and the you know um, third parties have had much longer to support uh, EV3 in that sense. Um, but we already see a lot of interest, uh, particularly in the fan community on the Facebook groups. And we're all there, right? The, the whole team here is always looking at what everyone else is creating and, and super inspiring to see how people are hacking the system and how people are pushing it and, and doing things that, that we're not doing with it. And then we're like, oh man, we've got to, we've got to try and get that into the next update, you know, or we've got to try and make that something that, that isn't just for super users who know how to write in Python that maybe could we turn those into scratch blocks? Is there a way we could do that experience that then, you know, every kid could enjoy. So um, for us, the, the, the whole, um, the reasons behind Robot Inventor and the reasons that we, you know, made the choices we did and we've ended up with the product that we have, we're around really trying to open it up to be as inclusive as possible, as welcoming as possible, um, making it easy to get started, but also giving that high ceiling of potential um, and, and to continue to update the experience. So, yeah, I would say it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to play with. Um, and we, we, had, we had a lot of fun making it, right? And we still have a lot of fun playing with it now, so. I think uh, we are just about out of time. Um, yes. 
Thank you, Morton and Dan, for uh, staying at work late for the kids around the globe. I noticed several team names. We had a team from Singapore uh, staying up late for you guys. And I see uh, all over the US, and Canada. And so you got a nice, we're in Brazil. So you got a nice, so all, all around the world. So thank you for, for sharing with us. And as you guys all know, the three champions teams at this event are going to win uh, Mindstorms 515 set on top of that lovely trophy that Arvin showed. So we certainly hope to see a teal robot <laughs> next season, right? We'd like to We're just happy to see any robot, right? We, yeah. we, we love to see the robots that, that are built for all competitions and just, you know, people, you know, uh, designing, creating, coding, just having fun. So, yeah. We're all Lego. We love to see Spike Prime. We love to see EV3. We love to see Boost. We love to see Robot Inventor. Uh, it's just fantastic. So yeah. Yeah. thanks everyone for the time. It, it's, I can't believe it's 1 a.m. in Singapore. So uh, yeah, thanks for sticking we, around. Yeah, thank you for sticking around and listening to, uh, to, to us two idiots uh, talk about how cool <laughs> our job is. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really great to hear all your knowledge. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I hope you have a, a good rest of the uh, uh, event and I will see you with Lee on uh, on Wednesday when we get to talk to Lee about uh, yeah what he's been up to. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Good morning. Good afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.